Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy Kenny Vaughn. He's going to talk about the greatness of Neil Young. Oh God, yes, I'm a crazy fanatic. I love Neil Young. I I was reading uh, some interviews uh, just last week. Um, I think it was either Un- I think it was Uncut magazine, and they were uh, they had some interviews with Billy Talbot and Ralph Molina uh, talking about Crazy Horse you know, experiences, and they were talking about making the, you know, like down by the river, stuff like that, you know, like, yeah, man, we just, we fell into a groove and we just cut it, you know, it was just, boom, it was over, you know, and those kind of things, and, you know, how, you know, they, you know, Neil would call him in, they were, we're going to learn a bunch of new songs, you know, and they learned, you know, 12 new songs, you know, and they, you know, play them, and then they go to a recording session, and he'd have, bring in 12 new, newer songs, you know. <laughs> oh, we're not going to play those today. You know, like, w- w- what are we going to, oh, I got this one. And then, and then he'd play another one, you know, and they just, you know, he's talking about how prolific he was and how impulsive he is, you know. But uh, he, he moves at a different pace than most people like him. You know, he's incre- always, he's one of those guys that just has a lot of ideas, you know, always. Yeah, I'm, I've, Anything I can find about him, I read. Really? You know, all those Mojo magazine articles and, you know, Uncut magazine articles are always great because I, they'll just take one little thing and kind of go into it. And you'll find stuff in those uh, articles that you won't find in Shaky, you know. You know, you can read Shaky, but you know, a lot of those little side stories aren't in there, you know. So it's, it's cool to have that perspective, you know. Tonight's the night. It's hard to beat. <laughs> oh, yeah. But the one, what's the one um, that has Barstool Blues? It's, it's the end of side one, Barstool Blues. Is it Zuma? Is it the same era? It yeah. The same? That's my favorite Neil Young track. Really? Yeah. I don't know why, but it just, it just you know, that's the one that I really like the most. There's something about Tonight's the Night. Oh. Like when you hear... Tired eyes. What a record! It is perfect because he knows what he's doing. You know, he's conveying the emotion. You know, there's just a feel to that, yeah, and an honesty to that record that uh, seems like something to try to attain. Well, you know, we were talking about him last week. Um, we were we were talking about uh, we were telling uh, what do they call the thing that tunes the voice now. Auto tune. We were talking about that. Um, my friend Bobby Field, the record producer, uh, calls it the "No Singer Left Behind" box. <laughs> but uh, we were talking about how well there's an artist right there that would never do that. Yeah, I mean, if you listen to some of those guitar solos, he he plays with notes that are deliberately out of tune. You know, he's deliberately out of tune because that's a thing. You know, it creates a tension. And if you if you went and tuned those records, it would sound awful. You know, it would suck. You know, but you know, he plays with with tuning the way the Velvet Underground did on the first album. John Cale. You know, Sterling Morrison and John Cale were deliberately detuning their guitars to get a more irritating sound. You know, and it's a great record. You know, I'm, I think it's the best Velvet record. You know, it's the best. But they um, deliberately played out of tune on certain things. You know, to create an effect. You know, to create a, a, a mo- an emotion. You know, and that's, you know, John Coltrane, Miles Davis. You know, Miles will come in under the note a little bit. You know, he he will play. Because it's part of the expression, you know. You don't play everything perfect in that kind of music. You per- perfect entails that you play, you know. You know, you're, there's emotion in notes that are slightly out of tune. You know, when Miles does it, it's brilliant. It's deliberate. You know, it is. You know, you can see it yeah. when he's doing it. You know, I, I, I saw him live, and you know, he's got that. He'll go up, you know. You can see him thinking before he blows a note, you know, he's like, you know, one note. It's like, wow, 
I wish I could play one note and make it sound like that, you know? <laughs> it's like, whoa, you know? Yeah. It's, it chills up your spine, you know? Oh, it was, she, he was, I was playing with Lucinda Williams and he was at, uh, backstage at a show. I just saw him there and I was like, whoa. I didn't mess with him though because he was, um, you know, he was listening and, at the time. And Well, we had played, uh, he b had listened to us, so I, I, I can't remember who he was listening to, but I didn't have, you know, there was no, I wasn't going to go up to him. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't going to be that person. What do you think about his, uh, his rig? Oh, I think it's great. It's personalized. You know, I, I always uh, like people that have a personalized sound that is, you know, and he's worked on it for his whole life. You know, that Tweed Deluxe and that black guitar, you know, that black Les Paul that's modified and changed pickups and changed parts. But, you know, it is what it is. I saw a Crazy Horse once, one time, and it was a... Um, they were playing on this, you know, big, it was a big coliseum, you know, and they're on this giant stage and they got all this stuff. And the whole show, they were all standing, bumping into each other in front of the bass drum, you know, it's these three hippies and a drummer, you know, <laughs> up there just like going, you know, with their heads bent over and, you know, you know, kind of like having a little powwow there, you know, and uh, I was like, but man, it sounded like a million bucks. It sounded like a jet airplane taking off, you know. But you know, that there is a show that didn't have any showmanship. There wasn't any posturing or, you know, how's everybody doing? You know, and none of that shit. You know. <laughs> if you'd like to hear more of Kenny Vaughn telling stories, click this playlist, and I'll see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you.